Hello and Namaste everyone. Welcome to my channel SigmaX. Today we are learning about Fogel method for the determination of the velocity of light. So let's start our journey with the experimental setup. I know most of you are struggling with making the correct diagram of experimental setup. In your course book, you can see a lot of rays coming out of source making the diagram a bit more complicated to draw eventually leading you to confusion. Therefore, I have come up with a solution which is much easier to draw and understand. Instead of drawing three rays of light, we are going to draw only one along the axis of converging lens. I know that to form an image in geometrical optics, at least two rays of light are needed but we are breaking this rule and using only one ray of light to derive the expression to determine the velocity of light. Why? Because it makes our diagram simple to understand. Before drawing the diagram, remember the main things used to set up this experiment. There are three types of mirror used in this experiment. Number 1. Half silvered plane mirror P. Number 2. Rotating plane mirror R and number 3 fixed concave mirror F. Also it consists of a source S, a convex lens L and a micrometer eyepiece E. In this experiment, the ray of light from source S is allowed to fall on convex lens L after passing through the half silvered plane mirror P. Since this ray passes through the center of convex lens L, it goes undeviated and forms an image at I. I know it's a bit ridiculous to say that a ray forms an image but believe me, it will be easier to draw. Note that, at the end of the video, we will complete our diagram by drawing other rays. If the plane mirror R is placed at A, which is also the center of curvature of concave mirror F, then the ray of light gets reflected by plane mirror R and therefore converges at pole O dash of the concave mirror F. Light is then reflected back from F along its original path and finally from an image at B1 after getting reflected from the half silvered plane mirror P. This image can be viewed with the help of micrometer eyepiece E. Now, if the plane mirror R is rotated rapidly at a uniform angular speed about an axis passing through A, then the ray after reflection from concave mirror F finds the plane mirror displaced by an angle theta to a new position R dash. As a result, the image is now formed at B2 and therefore appears to come from S1. If we produce the reflected ray of light backward of rotating mirror, then we find that it appears to come from I1. As we know that, if the mirror is rotated through an angle theta, the reflected ray rotates through an angle 2 theta. That means angle OAQ equals to 2 theta. Since angle IAI1 and angle OAQ are vertically opposite angles, angle IAI equals to angle OAQ or 2 theta. Now, using the relation of circle phi equals to L divided by R, we can write 2 theta equals to II1 divided by A where A is the radius of curvature of concave mirror. Therefore, I I1 equals to 2A theta. From the diagram, you can clearly see that S and S1 are the conjugate points with respect to I and I1. Therefore, S1 S and I I1 are proportional to the object distance and image distance. If L be the object distance and B be the distance between lens and rotating plane mirror, then image distance equals to A plus B. Hence, S1 S divided by I I1 equals to L divided by A plus B. Since I I1 equals to 2A theta, S1 S equals to 2A theta times L divided by A plus B. Also, if B1 B2 equals to Y, we can say that S S1 equals to B1 B2 which is equal to Y. This is because the sizes of object and image in plane mirror are equal. Hence, we can write Y equals to 2A theta L divided by A plus B or theta equals to y times a plus b divided by 2al, let it be equation 1. Now, if omega be the angular velocity of rotating mirror, then the time taken by the plane mirror to rotate through an angle theta is given by t equals to theta divided by omega. Since omega equals to 2 pi n, where n is the frequency of plane mirror, that is the number of revolutions made per second by the rotating mirror, we get time t equals to theta divided by 2 pi n, let it be equation 2. Also, the distance traveled by light in time t is equal to 2 times the radius of curvature a, that is from a to o dash and back to a. So, if c be the velocity of light, then time taken to cover the distance to a is given by t equals to 2a divided by c. Let it be equation 3. From equation 2 and equation 3, we can write 2a divided by c equals to theta divided by 
2 pi n or theta equals to 4 pi n a divided by c. Let it be equation 4. Now from equation 1 and equation 4 we have y times a plus b divided by 2 a l equals to 4 pi n a divided by c. Solving the above equation for c we get c equals to 8 pi n a square times l divided by y times a plus b. Hence by measuring the values of n, a, l, y and b experimentally we can calculate the value of speed of light by using this formula. Do you know using this method Focal found the speed of light to be 2.98 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second with less than 1% error. Now let's complete our diagram by drawing two more rays of light like this. In this way we can determine the speed of light using Focal's method. I hope from now on all of you can easily find the expression for the determination of velocity of light using Focal's method. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get notification when I upload a new video. I will see you guys in my next video. Till then, bye bye.